Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the Propeller Microcontroller, which is made by Parallax, and this is their board here. Now, the Propeller is a multi-core microcontroller, because on board the chip, there are eight 32-bit microcontrollers, and they're called COGS, like a gear in a machine. Now, each one of these COGS can, can run a task or a program independent from each other. Now, on board each COG, there are two timers, A and B timer, so there's a total of 16 timers inside the chip. Now each one of these timers have 32 modes, and we're going to look at two of those modes. The pulse width modulation, and the NCO, which is a numerically controlled oscillator, which is basically a frequency generator. So on my breadboard, I have five LEDs, and I have a RC low-pass filter, and we'll use these to exercise the onboard timers. Okay, we'll start off with a pulse width modulation mode. So I have a PWM signal fed to one of the LEDs on the breadboard, and I have it mapped to my keyboard. So when I press the up key, my duty cycle will increase, and if I press the down key, my duty cycle will decrease. So each time I hit the key, it sends a byte value to the timer, a byte value from 0 to 255. Now 0 will be totally off, and 255 will be totally on, so a value of 128 will be 50% duty cycle, so it will be half brightness. So if I press the up key, you can see the LED starting to come on. If I hold it down, I go all the way up to 255. And if I hit my down key, it will go all the way down to zero. So in between will be 128, would be halfway. So I can control it from the keyboard all the way up and all the way down. Okay, here's a program displaying the byte that is sent to the timer and the corresponding PWM signal that is sent to the LED. So we start out with a zero. We start incrementing it up. So around 128 would be about halfway, would be 50%. And we go all the way up to 255, that's full duty cycle to the LED. And we bring it down, back down to zero. Okay, I got my scope monitoring the signal to the LED. And right now it's at zero. Now if I start incrementing it, you can see the pulse width getting wider and wider. So that would be about 50% and I go all the way up to the top, that would be 255, that would be totally on. So I bring it back down, back down to zero. Okay, the same signal that was driving the LED, I have now driving a little gear motor. So we can control the speed now of this little gear motor. Okay, I have the PWM signal fed into a low-pass filter comprising of a resistor and a capacitor on the breadboard on the, on the propeller activity board. And I have the output fed into my analog meter. And so if I start increasing the, the pulse width, it's going to turn it into a voltage. The low-pass filter will smooth out the pulses and turn it into an uh, uh, output voltage up to 3 volts. And we can take it down. So basically it's a little digital to analog converter. Okay, the next feature that we're going to look at on the propeller microcontroller is the NCO, the numerically controlled oscillator. So basically it's a frequency generator and I've written some commands using the fourth programming language which are entered onto the keyboard interactively. Now the fourth I'm using is called Tachyon Fourth and it's written by Peter Jakaki who is a very clever person and this Tachyon 4th can be downloaded with many tutorials from his website, which I'll link in the description box. So basically the command words are hertz, kilohertz, and megahertz. So if I type 5 hertz, I'll get a 5 hertz output, which will be a 50% duty cycle square wave. I could type 10 hertz, 1000 hertz, or 1 kilohertz, 1 megahertz. I could type 1 million hertz. I could go all the way up to 40 megahertz. So basically from the keyboard I could enter any frequency with one hertz resolution. So next we'll see that on the scope. Okay, I have my scope hooked up to the propeller microcontroller monitoring the NCO output. And I've just typed 200 hertz on my keyboard. So I have a 200 hertz output of the NCO as you can see on the screen. So it's a 50% duty cycle square wave. So if I type 400 hertz, 
I get 400 hertz. If I type 800 hertz, I'll get 800 hertz and 1 kilohertz. And I can keep going on and on. Now another feature of the NCO that you could you could feed both of the timers A and B into one GPIO pin. So what I'll do, I'll program timer A to be 1000 hertz and I'll program timer B to be 1001 hertz and we'll feed that into one pin. I can do that right now. So there you see the 1000 hertz and the 1001 hertz with a 1 hertz beat tone. So we have an interference between the two frequencies and we get a 1 hertz beat tone. So these are just some examples of what you could do with the timers on the propeller microcontroller.